So today we are going to discuss about the fluid mechanics of the eyeball, especially the aqueous humor. So let me make one diagram. So this is uh, our iris, the ciliary body, choroid. we have cornea here and in between there is crystalline lens and in this area we have retina So today we are going to discuss about the fluid system of the eyeball. We have a two fluid mechanism in our eyeball. First one which is present in this particular area which is called a vitreous humor. And uh, the another fluid which is a very important fluid we are going to discuss today is the aqueous humor which is present here in between so let's just talk about a little bit about the vitreous humor then we will proceed towards the aqueous humor so this is vitreous humor this is aqueous humor so vitreous humor this area this vitreous humor is the fluid which is present in the vitreous cavity here which is made up of a fibrils of proteoglycans fibrils of proteoglycans which are gelatinaceous gelatin like substances very condensed attachment of the fibrils of proteoglycans which is present in this cavity in this vitreous body vitreous cavity which is called a vitreous humor and the uh, another thing the another fluid which is present in front of the lens which is called a aqueous humor so the very important role of this fluid mechanism of the eyeball is the maintenance of the distended globe structure that means that the retina the choroid this lens the cornea that all these structures are should be in the particular place because in order to maintain the optical system so when the light rays passes through the cornea then it passes to the another refractive media here of the crystalline lens then vitreous and the strikes the retina so first and the foremost function of the fluid mechanism of the eyeball is to maintain the optical system in order to get the clear image specifically i want to differentiate here in between the vitreous humor and the aqueous humor is the vitreous humor as i told you the fibrils of proteoglycan proteins which are a gelatinous uh, jelly like substances which are present in the vitreous cavity is it's stagnant it shouldn't move but the difference in between is the aqueous humor is the clear fluid which is flowing all over and this vitreous humor is stagnant so okay so we are in the point where we are discussing about the function and why this fluid mechanism is important to the eyeball the first important function what i explained to you is in order to get the distended globe structure that the ocular structures of the eyeball should be maintained in the particular position there is a force from the fluids in order to make the retina in this area the choroid in this area the lens in the place the uh, iris in the place and the cornea in the place 
so in order to get the clear optical system and the second a very important function of the aqueous humor here i want to specify is to provide the nourishment to the lens and the area of corneal endothelium so the area this particularly this area is a avascular area where there is no blood vessels so in this particular area the aqueous humor is the only fluid which gives a nourishment to the crystalline lens and the cornea so nature has given a very wonderful mechanism here without the blood vessels and blood the particularly this areas of the crystalline lens and the cornea and endothelium get it nourishments from the aqueous humor in the form of glucose amino acids ascorbic acid as an antioxidant and another components okay so this is an overview of the fluid mechanism now we will discuss in detail of the aqueous humor production circulation and drainage so first of all i want to make a very uh, a small diagram here in order to get the correlations so this is an irish this is a ciliary body and this is choroid and uh, this area is the cornea where in between with the help of suspensory ligament there is a lens so as i told you that this particular vitreous humor is present in this cavity and the aqueous humor is present in this area so one thing i want to specify in this small diagram is the eyeball is having a two chamber just in front of the lens and the back of the iris it is called posterior chamber just in front of the crystalline lens and back of the iris this particular area is called posterior chamber and in front of the iris and in the back of the cornea this is called anterior chamber okay so i would like to magnify this diagram particularly this section so our eye is like this and we need to make it in a sectional view here with the help of this so let me let me make a diagram here in very in magnified way so this is our ciliary body this particular area is magnified in this diagrammatic view so this is our ciliary body which is uh, having a two portion the posterior segment and the anterior segment the posterior segment is called pars plana the posterior segment is called pars plana because it's a plane in nature there is no no other structures present here and the front area is called pars plicata why it is called pars plicata because of this particular contour because of this grooves we will discuss what is it and we have attached to it irish on a similar diagrammatic presentation will be in the this area so this uh, irish is having a very important structure here which is called a dilator pupillary muscle and this area 
is sphincter pupillary muscles dilatory pupillary muscles as it dilates the pupil and sphincter pupillary muscle when it constrict the pupil and this is the aperture which we called a pupillary aperture here okay now we will see the diagrammatic presentation of production of the aqueous humor so in the aqueous humor there are important parts which we need to consider the first is the ciliaris muscle so these are the longitudinal muscles these are the radial muscles and these are the circular muscles and the another important part is this part which is called a vascular stroma and uh, this area is called ciliary epithelium okay so we need to consider as a summary that what are the parts they are so first one is the ciliaris muscle which are the longitudinal radial and circular muscle this area the another one is the vascular stroma the vascular ciliary stroma and the third one is the ciliary epithelium okay so now we will see how the production will comes on so these are the ciliary epithelium which are having an active transport of sodium ion with the help of sodium potassium channel gates so this ciliary epithelium is having a sodium potassium pump mechanism from where the sodium ion will release suddenly after the release of sodium ion we have a chlorine that is a positively charged will attract negatively charged the polarity will considered here and the chlorine will release and when the sodium and the chlorine will release from here there will be an osmotic pressure development and this osmotic pressure development is countered by water molecule and with the help of this water molecule the glucose the amino acids the ascorbic acid as an antioxidant and the bicarb will release so actually what we see that if we summarize the production here that the aqueous humor is generally produced from the posterior chamber of the eyeball which is magnified here and specifically if we are talking about the posterior chamber the aqueous humor is produced by this area these grooves are known as ciliary processes ciliary processes so the aqueous humor is produced by this ciliary processes actually the major secretional area is the ciliary epithelium but it comes to the ciliary epithelium from the ciliary vascular stroma so we need to consider that that the ciliary stroma will provides this constituents of the aqueous humor sodium chlorine bicarb glucose amino acids to the epithelium and from the epithelium the sodium potassium active pump mechanism gated channel will release the particularly an ion cation the water molecule bicarbs glucose amino acid ascorbic acid as an antioxidant as a whole so this thing 
दिस ऑल आर द कंस्टिट्यूंट बायोकेमिकल कंपोजिशन ऑफ द एक्वस ह्यूमर एंड विच विल फ्लो फ्रॉम द पोस्टेरियर चेंबर टू द एंटेरियर चेंबर ओके सो लेट मी क्लियरिफाई हेयर सो दिस इज द कॉर्निया एंड दिस इज द आइडो कॉर्नियल एंगल एंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस पिपलेरी एपर्चर द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ एक्वस ह्यूमर विल फ्लो एंड गोज टू द एंटेरियर चेंबर वन थिंग आई वॉन्ट टू कंसिडर हेयर दैट द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ द एक्वस इज अबाउट टू पॉइंट फाइव माइक्रोलीटर पर मिनट टू पॉइंट फाइव माइक्रोलीटर पर मिनट एंड द एक्चुअल एक्वस ह्यूमर इज पॉइंट थ्री एम एल सो पॉइंट थ्री एम एल इज द कंस्टिट्यूंट एक्वस ह्यूमर विच इज इन द इंस्टेंटली इन द आई एंड टू पॉइंट फाइव माइक्रोलीटर पर मिनट इज द प्रोडक्शन रेंज सो you can able to see the flow the drainage of the aqueous humor is a continuous process so in order to maintain the optical clarity and the fluid clarity so this 2.5 microliter per minute is the production range and 0.3 ml is the aqueous constituent in the particularly in the eyeball so within an hour somehow all aqueous humor will complete drain out this is the process which is ongoing and any disturbance in this fractional flow will lead to increase in the intraocular pressure as the normal intraocular pressure is 10 to 20 mm of mercury so what is intraocular pressure intraocular pressure is the pressure which is exerted by the fluids so in order to maintain the distended eye globe the this fluids will produce a pressure which is called an intraocular pressure basically the iop which is in between the 15 and 16 is normal range it is fluctuating 10 to 20 mm of hg is the uh, the normal range here if any kind of disturbance in this pathway come it will lead to the rics of a raised intraocular pressure which is the one of the major cause or one of the major risk factor of the glaucoma so this is all about the production of the aqueous humor in the very next session we will discuss about the circulation and drainage how will it, how it drain out thank you